Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. This time we'll be checking out Lethal Excess, developed and published by Eclipse Software Design and released by them in 1991. Excess is the follow-up to Wings of Death, released in 1989, which was coded by Mark Rusutcher. And you can see Mark Rusutcher actually produced this game, and he helped design it as well, although he didn't code it in this case. In that title sequence, we can see game designed by Mark Rusutcher, Heinz Rudolph and Klaus Freen. And Heinz Rudolph and Klaus Freen actually coded this game on the Atari ST computer and then cross-coded it over onto the Amiga. So this isn't an Amiga exclusive title, in fact it's a cross-conversion. And moving through the credits, you can see Heinz Rudolph also created the graphics and additional graphics were created by Nicholas Holmquist. This fantastic music was created by Jochen Hippel and I think this is one of his greatest compositions and it really enhances the game to have terrific music which of course I think was a step up from the Atari ST. You can see an example of the terrific cover art that this game had and also who created it. And lastly we find out that there was planned a Commodore 64 version but unfortunately the 64 conversion never came out. We can skip the introduction with a quick press of that fire button. The actual title screen combines the menu system and from here we can select one or two player simultaneous mode and we can also change the difficulty as well from easy, normal and lethal and let's select one player easy mode for this just to try and get this as easy as possible and let's leave the sound mode on music plus sound effects and hopefully with those all selected it's time to press start but not before we've taken in that great Starfield background and also this music. Let's press that fire button and move on to the game itself and as the game loads this is the WHD load version so it cuts out most of the loading and it lets us wait to press the fire button before beginning each level. As you can see, Lethal Excess, just like Wings of Death, is another vertical shoot em up, and we haven't seen too many shoot em ups this season, even though it's supposed to be based on those and 3D games. And if you remember, we saw World Class Leaderboy, which was a 3D game, and then we followed that up with F1, which was another 3D game, and of course, 8 Bit Killer, which was a 3D shoot em up. 
So returning to the pure shooter mops for this one, let's investigate the game I've never actually played or seen before when I actually recorded this. And as you can see, I'm just trying to investigate all the weapon options and the stage it seems to have given us a huge arsenal. Unfortunately, that will wear off after a number of seconds, returning us to the minimal firepower all over again. And if you had built up maximum firepower, it will return us to minimal as far as I know. And that's a severe detriment to picking up those great pickups. given two lives at the beginning of the game and you can pick up extra lives as well if you can find them but you can see we are on zero lives at the moment so it won't be very long before we die we don't have any continue so after each try it will give us some statistics and then it will throw us all the way back to the title screen or at least that instruction page not the title intro itself and you can see that I am trying my best to try to learn this game and in the Lemon Amiga games competition it really helps to break down a game and to investigate just what makes it tick in this case I'm trying to investigate whether it's worth an even possible to pick up the very best weapons from the start and that would make traversing this game pretty much easier. At the start of every life we are given an energy bar and you can see that actually refills at stages and we can even top that up by collecting energy hearts throughout that level and the energy is important to monitor as we are going through this game because if we end up touching a bullet then we'll end up losing energy but if we collide with an enemy we will lose a significant amount and maybe even all of it so sometimes it's worth really looking at that thing but that is not very helpful when the object of the game is to concentrate on it and to always observe what's going on on that screen and when the player is in the zone trying to concentrate they don't really want to be glaring all over that screen just to make sure that they are still alive Like Wings of Death and all the best shooters, this game will give us some power-ups. All of those collectibles have an associated sound effect. The weapons on offer are the lowly triangles, which are the weakest weapon in the game, the Omega symbols, which we have at the moment, which are fairly tough on the first level. We also find plasma bananas a little bit later on, and wiping blasters, and also dual bolts, homing missiles, and lasers, which are the most powerful weapon in the game. At this point, we are sticking with the Omega weapon, and there's also lots of other things to pick up including the nuclear bomb which blows everything up on screen the drones which give you a metal drone and extra firepower which you can see I've got one at the moment there's also C's to pick up which are continues because you don't get any continues at the start of the game we also find three arrows which are speed up arrows which will speed us up and then it will cycle all the way down to the slow speed if you collect too many of those and we can find ship tokens which are extra lives and we also find hearts which are extra energy and also well A's which are also fire which can be helpful because I'm rapidly firing at the moment and the A means we can simply hold down that fire button and also skulls which will detriment our current firepower in the main we will find dollar symbols which just give us some bonus score and that's not really appropriate when you're trying to upgrade this ship
Even though we collected a C to continue, I'm not quite sure whether that had any effect because we seem to have skipped straight on to a brand new game again. And it's the retry factor which really, really, really divides player opinion. Because if you are good at shoot em ups, then you'll find a difficult experience. And if you're not very good at shoot em ups, you'll find this very tough. And it's that very tough factor which makes some players think that this game is too hard. And I can definitely see their point of view. But you can see sometimes the game gives us helpful arrows which show us where the next enemies are going to appear and that means that we can avoid them and that's particularly helpful to the brave adventurer trying to learn this game. At the very start, it's the speed which matters more than anything because if you have the speed, you can destroy some of these ships and outmaneuver all these weapons. So it's thanks to the speed that I can do that on this particular try. And if I didn't have the speed, then even with this weapon, I'd be struggling. But yes, this game is possible, and if it gives us a smart bomb just at the hardest moments, sometimes the game can even give us a break. start of every new life you'll gain a smart bomb effect and I'm not quite sure whether we can activate that on our own but I definitely know that if you pick up too much of a weapon it will give us a smart bomb effect instead of an upgrade and that's really good to know and it means we can keep on collecting the same weapons token but if we pick up a different one we will downgrade all the way back to the start again so it's best to avoid all of the weapons and concentrate just on the one which we need. This game was coded on the Atari ST, so unfortunately it comes with the Atari ST slightly jerked scrolling, and that's unfortunate because the colours and the graphics themselves are very nice, but the scrolling is slightly not as smooth as the Amiga could produce. The game was co-designed with Mark Rosaccia and he coded and designed Wings of Death in 1989, and he designed and produced Wings of Death 2, Lethal Excess in 1991. He then co-coded Monster Business, which is an excellent game, which we will be reviewing next season. And his final game on the Amiga was a game called Stone Age, which has a 7.5% rating on the Lemon Amiga database, which came out in 1992, which he produced. Great graphics were created by Klaus Freen and Heinz Rudolph, and a little help from Nicholas Malmquist, and of course the music was Jochen Hippel, who was more famous on the Commodore 64, but he also created music for Wings of Death, and also Turrican 3, which appeared in 1993. So now that we've had our quick warm up of the very first time I've ever seen or tried this, let's try to attempt this game properly using all our skills and all our firepower and everything that we've learnt to get the best firepower right from the go. And it is possible if you ignore the triangle dropping down from the first wave and destroy the spider on the left you will gain a weapons power up and a shield as well which is a drone which will fly around the ship and you can collect another one here which gives us an upgrade of another one or at least it should do and the final wave of purple fish on the right should give us a third as well. Drone. 
now we collect a third drone and also an extra life top up and a speed up as well which sets us up for the rest of the game. You may notice that the three drones that we have around the ship, that's the maximum that we can have, and they actually lag behind the player, so yes you can move forward but they will lag behind so sometimes you have to be very careful, and sometimes enemy bullets can still be avoided just like that, and so let's collect the extra life at this point, and let's bravely try to march on. But even though we get three drones in this game, it is not as good as the one drone that we got in intact because they are simply too fast and maneuver too wildly around the ship. Lethal Excess may be a difficult game, but it does give us the breaks if we have that firepower, and it means that we can have fun playing this, and if you are a veteran of this game, of course you will be able to pick up all those power-ups. You can see the graphics are nicely drawn, and at least a step up from many of the graphics, and even a bit brighter than they were in Wings of Death, and you can see that some care and attention has been used in the game. And if only it was slightly a bit quicker, this ship is a little too big and the enemies are a little too big and they take up quite a lot of that space on the screen. Unfortunately, if you lose a life, then you'll lose all your firepower and all the speed ups as well, which is very unfair in a game like this. Unfortunately it is not the firepower which kills us, it's the speed and not being able to outrun and out dodge bullets is the thing which kills us most in this game because it's more of a bullet dodger than an actual shoot him up if you don't have the firepower to shoot back. In this case I have an upgrade in the weaponry but the banana shot unfortunately isn't great because it's only the one and we don't have the spread fire of the triangles or even the sweeper which is quite a good weapon if you power that up as we saw in Wings of Death. It is possible and even though we have a weedy firepower and the slowest moving ship in the game, we managed to find our way through to the first level boss and the first level boss is very very easy and it makes a change because we don't really want to get blown up at this stage, we just want to move on to level 2.
Let's check out the second level of the game, which is of course harder and you must upgrade and find the best upgrades from the very start. You can see the graphics are now a desert landscape and we find a whole new batch of enemies and after this we move on to a lot of a landscape and I'm not quite sure how many levels there are in the game. But you can see I am being destroyed here on my last life and the music is a complete ripoff of Sirenoid. In 2002, Heinz Rudolph announced an enhancement to this game called Lethal XS XL, which was supposed to appear on the Atari ST and the Amiga 500. Unfortunately, it appears that that project was also cancelled in 2002. Which brings us on to those scores. The lowest score came from Amiga Power, who awarded this game 70%. Stuart Campbell said it was a stiff test of your shoot 'em up skills. The current Lemon Amiga score is 73%. Amiga Computing awarded this 83%. Amiga Action gave it 84%. And Generation 4 gave this game 87%, which awards this a general average score of 8 out of 10. Thank you for viewing another Lemon Amiga play guide and review, and we'll see you again in another one sometime soon.